Start to read, start to read with me. It's so much fun and you'll agree that it's easy when you start to read with me. Read along with the words I say. Keep on trying, then someday you'll be reading by yourself. You can do it. First you watch and listen. Then get right to it and say the words with me. Don't forget, you can read along with these stories over and over again. Start to read, start to read with me. A whole wide world of wonder is waiting. When you start to read, when you start to read with me. We're gonna have a good time. <laughs> Don't cry, Big Bird. Written by Sarah Roberts. Pictures by Tom Lee. I like to play with my friends. But sometimes it is hard to play with them. Their jump ropes are too short. Their hopscotch boxes are too small. Hide-and-seek hiding places are too little. Seesaws come down, but never go up. One day I came home from the park by myself. I am too big to play with my friends, I sobbed. I was so busy crying, I did not see Snuffy. Don't cry, bird, said Snuffy. You are not too big. Their games are too little. I jumped up. I stopped crying. Do you really think so, Snuffy? Yes, bird, I really do, said Snuffy. You are a nice size, big like me. Then I had an idea. Hey, we are both big, I said. So let's play together. Snuffy shook his head. No, Bird, I can't play now. It is time for my nap. Snuffy went slowly down the street. It is nice to be big, I thought to myself. But sometimes I wish I were smaller. Back at the park, Ernie and Bert were thinking, If only Big Bird were smaller, then he could play with us, said Ernie. Well, we can't make him smaller, said Bert. But maybe our games can be bigger, like this. Then he tied two jump ropes together. Grover came to get me. We have a big surprise for you, said Grover. When I got to the park, I saw Ernie and Bert. They were turning the big rope. Jump, Big Bird, they said. I jumped. The rope went over my head. Hooray for Big Bird, they said. Everyone had a turn at jumping rope. Then Betty Lou drew huge hopscotch boxes. Come on, Big Bird, hop, she said. I hopped. Then I looked down. I did it right, I said. I did not step on the lines. Hooray for me! I was really happy until I remembered something. I am still too big for hide and seek, I said. Then I had an idea. Hey, everybody, I shouted. I do not have to hide. I can be it. I can look for you. Everybody played hide and seek. 
pie was it. Then we played on the seesaw. I sat on one end. All my friends sat on the other. The seesaw went up and down. What can we do now? Asked Harry. Let's fly my new kite, said Betty Lou. She held the string and ran and ran and ran. The kite began to fly. It flew higher and higher until it hit the top of a tree. Bump! The kite fell down and stuck in the tree. Oh no! cried Betty Lou. I'll never get my kite back now. I ran to Betty Lou. Don't cry, I said. I think I can help. I stood on my tiptoes. I reached high up and pulled down the kite. Here, Betty Lou, I said. Your kite is as good as new. Hooray for Big Bird, everyone cheered. I was very happy. Now let's play my favorite game, I said. What game is that, everyone asked. Giant Steps, I said. Wait for me. Written by Molly Cross. Pictures by Joe Matthew. Elmo and his friends lived on Sesame Street. Elmo was younger than all of his friends. Elmo was smaller than all of his friends. It was hard for him to keep up with them. Elmo could not run as fast as the others. He could not jump as far as the others. He could not play baseball at all. The bat was bigger than Elmo. One day, Ernie, Bert, Grover, and I went roller skating. Elmo went too. Suddenly, a bell rang. It was the ice cream truck. Everyone skated off to get some ice cream. Hey, Elmo cried. Wait for me. Grover skated back to Elmo. I, Grover, will help you. Hold on to my hand, he said. And off they went. Clickety-clack, lickety-split. Faster and faster they went. Then they hit a bump. Crash! They both fell down. Wah! Wah! Went Elmo. Oh, my goodness! Are you hurt? Asked Grover. I have a boo-boo on my leg, cried Elmo. Grover looked and looked. At last, he found a tiny scratch. Do not cry, said Grover. We are near my house. We can go there and wash your scratch. On the way, they saw Ernie and Bert and me. We were eating ice cream. But the ice cream truck was gone. Where were you? I asked. Helping Elmo, Grover said sadly. Ernie said, We're going to ride our bikes now. Do you want to come? Bert asked Grover. Oh, yes, said Grover. After I take care of Elmo. Grover took Elmo to his bathroom. He washed Elmo's tiny scratch. He put a tiny bandage on it. Then he said to Elmo, I am going biking now. Elmo said, Me too. 
No, Elmo. You are too little, said Grover. Elmo looked sad. Will I be big enough tomorrow? He asked. I do not think so, said Grover. Grover took his bike outside. Elmo sadly watched Grover ride off. Everybody is bigger than I am, said Elmo. Everybody is faster and better at everything. Not me, said a kind voice. It was Grover's grandpa. I know how you feel, Elmo, he said. But fun things can happen when you are left behind. How would you like to go to the zoo with me? I was going to ask Grover, but he went biking. How about it, Elmo? Elmo began to smile. Yes, he said happily. Elmo and Grandpa walked to the zoo. Elmo did not have to run to keep up. On the way, they stopped to look into store windows. They bought ice cream and listened to a band. Grandpa said, people who rush miss things. We will take our time. At the zoo, they watched the seals get fed. Then Grandpa bought some peanuts. Now let's feed the elephants, he said. And they did. They saw all the animals. Then Grandpa said, Time to go home now. Take me home, piggyback, Elmo asked. Grandpa shook his head. No, Elmo, he said. I am just as tired as you are. As soon as they got home, Grandpa sat down. He took off his shoes. Oh, that feels good, he said. You're just the right size to sit on my lap, Elmo. Come on up here, he said. I will read you a story. Elmo climbed up on Grandpa's lap. Grandpa read him the story of the three bears. And they lived happily ever after, said Grandpa. Just then, Grover came in. Who lived happily ever after, asked Grover. He was surprised to see Elmo in his Grandpa's lap. Three bears, shouted Elmo. And guess what? We saw real bears. Now Grover was really surprised. What? Where did you see real bears? cried Grover. At the zoo, said Elmo. Grover wailed. You went to the zoo without me? We saw the zookeeper feed the seals, said Elmo. And we fed the elephants. Oh, we had so much fun. And we had an ice cream cone. What kind? Grover asked. Chocolate chip, said Elmo. Grandpa smiled at Grover. Did you have fun riding your bike? He asked. Oh, yes, said Grover. But I would like to go to the zoo, too, Grandpa. Next time, please wait for me. Grover and the New Kid Written by Jennifer Smith Pictures by Tom Cook Grover liked school. He liked his room. He 
he liked his teacher. He liked the children in his class. One day, a new boy came to Grover's school. This is Barry, said the teacher. Barry is going to be in our class. It is hard to be new, Grover said to himself. I will help Barry. I will be his friend. Grover said, Hi, Barry. My name is Grover. Barry said, Hi, look what I have. Barry took a little car out of his pocket. Oh, what a cute little car. May I play with it? asked Grover. Barry shook his head. No, he said. Oh, said Grover. I understand. Grover showed Barry the clay cupboard. He shared his crayons with Barry. He helped Barry find the bathroom. He gave one of his cookies to Barry at milk time. But Barry never once said thank you. Soon it was story time. Everyone sat in a circle. The teacher read them Goldilocks. Everyone was very quiet. Everyone but Barry. Please be quiet, said the teacher. Barry kept talking. After story time, everyone went to the playground. Let's go on the slide, said Barry. OK, said Grover. Grover got in line behind Sam. But Barry ran to the front. He pushed in front of Molly. Barry climbed the ladder. He stood at the top of the slide. Hey, Grover, he called. Look at me. Molly started up the ladder. Barry did not wait his turn, she said. That is not nice. Who does he think he is? Grover said, he is just new. It is hard to be the new kid. Do not be mad at him. Back inside, Grover showed Barry the wooden puzzles. There was a farm puzzle. There was a zoo puzzle. There was a circus puzzle. Truman took the farm puzzle. I want that one, said Barry. He grabbed it from Truman. Grover was the only one who ate lunch with Barry. The others talked about Barry. Barry doesn't wait his turn, said Truman. Barry doesn't say please or thank you, said Molly. Barry reminds me of someone rude, said Sam. Who, asked Truman. Goldilocks, said Sam. They all laughed and laughed. After lunch, Grover painted a picture. It had a yellow sun. It had a red house. It had a blue car. He stood back and looked at his picture. It looked good. Grover was proud of his painting. Then Barry came over. He showed Grover his painting. It was a picture of a fire truck. That is very nice, said Grover. Do you like mine? Your picture needs a fire truck, Barry said. He picked up a brush. He painted a fire truck next to Grover's car. I do not want that in my painting, shouted Grover. You are not nice to anyone. And Grover walked away from Barry. Barry looked surprised. Grover sat all by himself and looked out the window. He did not want to paint anymore. He did not want to look at books. He did not want to do anything. 
Suddenly, a little toy car ran into Grover's foot. Grover, Barry said shyly, do you want to play with my car? I'm sorry about your painting. I forgot how to be nice today. I know, said Grover. He smiled. Let us play with your car together. Soon it was time to clean up. Molly washed the paint brushes. Sam picked up the clay. Truman stacked the puzzles. Grover put away the blocks. And Barry helped everyone. Grover and Barry walked home from school together. Barry said, I was afraid to come to school today. I know, said Grover. It is hard to be the new kid. At the corner, Grover and Barry waved goodbye. See you tomorrow, said Grover. See you tomorrow, said Barry. I am glad you are my friend. Start to read, start to read with me. It's so much fun and you'll agree that it's easy when you start to read with me. Read along with the words I say. Keep on trying, then someday you'll be reading by yourself. You can do it. First you watch and listen. Then get right to it and say the words with me. Don't forget, you can read along with these stories over and over again. Start to read, start to read with me. It's so much fun and you'll agree that it's easy when you start to read with me. Read along with the words I say. Keep on trying, then someday you'll be reading by yourself. You can do it. First you watch and listen. Then get right to it and say the words with me. Read along with the words I say. Keep on trying, then someday you'll be reading by yourself. You can do it. First you watch and listen. Then get right to it and say the words with me. Don't forget, you can read along with these stories over and over again. Start to read, start to read with me. A whole wide world of wonder is waiting. When you start to read, when you start to read with me. We're gonna have a good time. <laughs>